Hey guys, how are we all doing today? I hope that we are all feeling really blessed within ourselves. We are in point with our goals. We got it all going on. We know exactly where we're going and who we're going to be doing it with and, you know, and all that jazz, basically. So this quick introduction is for a recording that yours truly had done with regards to what to do if you see your ex-partner with their new partner. Now, to be fair, this really should have been a part of the case of the ex saga, but I kind of like didn't think to put it in there. And um, I still decided to record it anyway and just have it as a standalone discussion. So, guys, has this happened to you? If so, how did you manage to counteract the adversity that was, you know, basically in your face? Pop your comments in the box below, like and share it with your friends, your family and your co-workers as well. Don't forget to subscribe on my channel by clicking on the little bell below, you know, the little icon bell. And then that means then you'll get emailed once I have uploaded new content for you guys. Bear in mind that this does contain strong language. Okay, so please be mindful when you are going to listen to this recording. If anything, don't listen to it when you've got small kids around because it's, you know, more for adults. Thank you very much. And also apologies to those who have a sensitivity to profanities. But I have, my darlings, I have actually warned you guys as well. All right, so without further ado, I'm going to pop you through. Take care for now. Stay blessed. Stay golden. Never lay down and accept your fate. Always aim higher. Enjoy. You know, when it comes to kind of like, as I said, um, breakups, we are always sort of like never imagining that we would be the ones that would be getting dumped, you know, facing that rejection now and, and what have you, right? From our, you know, supposed partners. And we have no choice, but we just got to get on and do what we've got to do. And, you know, it's never an easy situation, or an easy emotion that we have to manage because we've also got life expectancies as well that we've got to deal with. We've got our debts we've got to take care of, we've got bills, we've got studying to do, we've got work to do, we've got families and that to sort of take care of and tend to and what have you, et cetera, et cetera. So when that it comes on top of all of that pressure, for somebody to turn and dump you, that's something that, you know, is that we have to deal with that too. But it's not easy and sometimes that can sort of like, to a certain extent, it can, you know, sort of supersede everything else that we have to deal with and manage in our lives because of the heartbreak that we're facing and we're feeling because where we thought that our partners would have been with us all the time and they wasn't, you know, we now have woken up and realized that, hello, we're no longer together. Now, this instance is to deal with the fact that they, they finished with you. If you now are going somewhere now, you could be going on your way to work, you know, you're trying to pull your life together, you've got so much things going on, okay? And this was like the previous week, week before whatever that, you know, you broke up with your other half, okay, now that they're your ex. And then all of a sudden one day you see your ex and you think, oh my God, that, that's so and so. And then just as now they're walking towards you now or whatever, you then notice that they're actually, they're not on their own. They've got their new partner with them. And you know when you get that kind of jolt and that kind of shock to the system, because obviously it's going to be a shock when you first see that they have moved on so quickly and left you to sort of like pick up the pieces, so to speak, right? But the thing is, is how do you handle that? How are you able to still remain dignified within yourself? How are you still able to show a strong face, even though underneath you are absolutely bawling like a baby because you just can't believe that he or she could be so inconsiderate? Now, obviously, in that, now, emotionally speaking, you know, your partner, your, or sorry, pardon me, your ex wouldn't have known that you and them were going to buck up on the street. Okay. But that's just a twist of, you know, unfortunate fate. And maybe that's done in a way to kind of like test you to see how strong you are as a person. 
But you know, when you sort of have those kind of like those thoughts in your mind that how could they do that? They have no consideration. But what it is, is that you have to remain steadfast calm. You have to stand your ground. Despite the fact that you really want to sort of lash out, despite the fact that you really want to say something and really just or just go after the person who they're seeing. Because remember, at the same time as well, you don't even know what that person's about. You don't know nothing about them. They don't know nothing really about you. You All they know is that, oh, that's my new man or my new woman's ex. And that's it. So there's no way of you sort of like getting any kind of information from them to say, well, how long have you known this and other? I mean, that's down to them if they're going to tell you, if they're going to get involved in anything like that, or they might just say, no, I'm not going to get involved with that right now. I'm just going to let my partner deal with that. Keep yourself with your head held high. That's the first and foremost thing. Keep your head held high. You know, at this stage, I wouldn't even say there's no point in pretending that you didn't see them because you've just, they see you, you know, fully up and down. They can just see you there. And you've seen them because obviously you both you both sort of locked eyes. I wouldn't even go as far as saying anything because you don't want to take it there for, for something to get said, and then it might be you know you, how you might say it might come out wrong, or they might think you're being sarcastic, so, you know, a bit funny, and then you know it's just going to cause an altercation. And you know what? There's people around you guys because you're out on the street, right? But the fact is, is that you are going to have to remain like as solid as a rock you're going to have to stand so strong with that because at the end of the day I'm you know I have to be honest there's nothing you can do there is nothing you can do at that precise moment in time there's nothing you can do you just have to stand there and see it with your own two eyes and you're going to have to carry yourself and you're going to have to keep walking now bearing in mind you know this could be well this can be for both male or female like if your ex is like if I'm talking to you know if you're a woman and you're listening to this now and you know your your boyfriend now has you know a girlfriend and the girl the, all right I'm gonna just be honest and say look she's she's more physically attractive than than you you know according to you know people around they can say well you know they can see there's a there's a there's more of a preference to the new person than what they had for you you're gonna have to it's difficult i know but you're gonna have to just you're gonna have to handle that shit you're gonna have to handle it like a boss because again now we are who we are we can't we you know there's nothing we can do with you know how we look we were born to be as to look a certain way okay now the fact is is that she might you know have her own hair you might only be wearing wigs and weaves right she might be taller than you, you know, she might be slimmer than you, you know, she might even be a different race to you and she could even be pregnant. All of these things that are sort of like flashed in your face, like to make you have that kind of like emotional reaction where you might end up lashing out and doing the wrong thing is something that you really can't afford to have on your head right now. Because there's no point in sort of like raising up yourself to turn around and start fighting people because of the fact that your partner left you. Even if that was something that she probably had a little part in. Again, I reiterate, you're going to have to keep solid as a rock because you have too much going for you right now. You've got too much to lose. And if they had formed their union out of deception, then you know that karma will deal with that. And they will have to understand and overstand and expect that one day karma is going to come knocking on their door and they're going to have to face that kind of consequence. But you're going to have to make sure that you are just carrying yourself with dignity. You've got your self-respect. Because as I said, what I just described to you, right, was just physical attributes. That's just physical stuff. But that has nothing to do with the personality. Did you hear me mention about the personality? No, I didn't. I never mentioned nothing about how she could be as a person. I just told you what she looks like. She might not even be nice at all. She might not even be all of that as a nice, as a person. But you have an amazing character about you. You know, you're, you're one of those people that when you, you walk into a room, you light it up because everybody just loves your magnetic personality. But it just meant that the person who you was with failed to realize that. They, you know, you and him was not on that kind of level. You weren't compatible enough. But that does not make you any less of a woman because of the fact that, you know, you've just seen now your ex-man 
with his new woman. You see what I'm saying? You still have to carry yourself with dignity. As I've always said, you've got to keep yourself balanced, you've got to keep yourself focused, you've got to keep yourself elegant and sophisticated. Because you're the better person. You have to be the better person. You are going to be the better person. I beg you, be the better person. You go now and put yourself in that situation now. And, you know, you know how some, oh my days, you know how some certain women can be, right? <laughs> God. I don't, I don't mean to laugh, right? You know, I've got a bit of humor and, you know, sometimes it just comes out. And I'm sorry if, you know, if you don't really want to hear that right now and you don't appreciate that. So I do apologize because what I'm talking about is kind of serious and it's very emotional as well for, for anyone who's listening to this, yeah? But the fact is, is that you get some of them women out there that they know that they look really pretty. They know that their body is just banging. They know that they can get any man that they want. But, you know, sometimes I don't know how to keep them, right? But then that's just another side of it, right? But let's just say that, you know, they know that they can get any man they want like that now, right? Because, they, you know, they've got it all. And, you know, sometimes I can sort of like sort of say something really bitchy, really catty and, and this and that. Other. Again, you have to know how to handle yourself. You have to be like the soldier to just really plod through and just totally ignore them as, you know, if they're saying anything to you, you're just going to have to ignore it. You're just going to have to keep going on. You're just going to have to keep moving. Staying stuck in that kind of situation and that rut, you will, you're just clouding yourself. You're obscuring yourself from your chances of ever really getting out of that of that dark place. It doesn't matter what they say. It really doesn't matter what they say. They may not even say anything to you at all. In fact, funnily enough, maybe they're more worried about what you're going to do to them as opposed to what they could do to you. Do you see what I'm saying? Especially if you knew that your partner was saying, oh, you know, I just need time or whatever. I just, you know, I've just got so much on, you know, I just think we need to break up. And you might agree to it now. And think, yeah, well, you know, things aren't really going between us that great. Well, I just, you know, take care, wish you the best or what have you. And then two twos now, because they said to you that they wanted to be on their own now, when you see them now together with their with this girlfriend of theirs, and, you know, obviously they said this to you like a week, you know, the week before, you know, that just shows you what kind of person that you would have had in you know that you was around you was around somebody who wasn't really being straight as an arrow they weren't really being straight they wasn't really being honest with you they were just fucking around and i don't mean that figuratively but I'm, I'm just talking about like just messing around like messing you around with the kind of like you know the chat one minute they're going to say it like this and then it turns out to be something totally fucking different and then you've seen them now with some next woman and you're like who the fuck is this bitch right I thought you said to me that you were supposed to be taking time out so that you could get your space and everything like that. We're trying to sort of go through, you know, whatever kind of situations that we're trying to go through. And then I see you with her. It's going to be a tough one. But then when you think about it on the flip side now, at the end of the day, let her deal with that. Because she's just got herself somebody who is also going to be inconsistent with her. Because it seems to me as if your ex is somebody that really don't know what he wants out of life. Who he wants out of life. Who is he? Who was he? Who does he want to be? Where does he want to go in his life? You know? Maybe he might have all of those kind of ideas and plans. Maybe he just kept them up in his head, but he wasn't able to sort of like express them out to you verbally and physically to show exactly what was going on. But whatever and however the, the union ended between you and them is how it ended. And if he wasn't able to sort of like be truthful and honest with you and you've got the girl that's there standing or laughing after you and laughing in your face about ha 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 and all this crap business, you know, look, I've got your man now and all that. Yeah, good luck. Good luck with that. Because at the end of the day, what he's done to you, not being funny, but most times they do it to them too. They do it to them as well. It's only a matter of time. Because the man's still trying to figure out who he is. He, he ain't sussed it out yet. 
And if he hasn't got somebody that is on a particular level to really sit down and vibe with him and really reason with him and trying to get to some kind of intellectual kind of conversation with him to try and look at ways to improve and progress with their lives together, then he's never going to be able to get that inspiration until a very, very long time later. Because sometimes, you know, it takes, as I said, it always takes two people to make a relationship work. And if you've got somebody who's like a, a real airhead and you are somebody who's trying to look f- forward in a way to do with like, you know, trying to like boost up your knowledge and try and, you know, gain more wisdom as you're getting older. But you, you know, you're around somebody or, you know, they've got somebody who's into like, you know, all sorts of reality TV shows and they're so sort of like dumbed down. Th- it's not really going to help them in the long run unless you know, it's all a physical thing at the end of the day and not something that's more to do, with, you know, on a spiritual kind of like emotional kind of level. Because all it is that, you know, it seems to be would be about sex. So anyone don't have to be that intelligent, really, do they, when it comes to fucking? All they just need to do is just lay down and just take it, bust a nut, finish with that, and that's it. But, you know, at least you still have your dignity. You, In, in fact, the way how I look in it, you got off lightly. You got off. You got free. You got free from them because at the end of the day, they just basically showed you that they are not consistent enough, and they don't really deserve your kind of relationship, and they don't really deserve your kind of love that you would have been able to give them. They're not ready for it yet. So there's no point in busting your head over somebody who is not ready to be in a committed relationship. Because if they're not going to be wanting to be in a committed relationship with you right now, they may not be ready to be in a committed relationship with anybody else right about now. Maybe they just want to be having fun and and having a whole heap of sexual partners and that's it because that's what they want. But it doesn't mean that's what you want for yourself, you know? So that's something to kind of bear in mind. Just remember that you have a lot going for yourself. You've got too much to lose. You've come too far now. To ever let anybody to come now into your life and or into your face unexpectedly and drop something now on you now that is going to have you now reacting in a certain way, irrationally, and then you're the one that's now going to be sitting in jail You're because you fought somebody over what? Over a man? <laughs> over a man. And do you know something I've, I said as well? Um, because this is like the flip side to... As I said, um, the discussion that I done in one of the the case of the ex sagas, and I mentioned that a woman must never fight over a man that she never gave birth to. He's not yours. He never was. He was only with him for a certain time, a certain amount of time. That was all it was to gain some kind of life experience from the other person, to learn something from them, whether it was something that was positive or something that was negative. He is his own person. You are your own person. The only person that has claims over him is the woman that gave birth to him in this world. And babe, that weren't you that did that. You didn't do that. Another woman done that. And that woman is his mother. So she's the one that has those kind of rights over him. As old as he is, it don't matter. He could be 22, 42, 52. He's still someone's baby at the end of the day. So you have to know within yourself that you still have so much more to give to somebody. You just had that little moment of in time with him. You've seen what kind of person he is. And you've just been like, oh my God, like, you know something? You can look at the girl and think, you know what? You can keep that. Keep it. I got away. Whatever she's going to have to endure now is what she's going to have to endure. And you know something? Good luck with that. Because she may have that. But you see you. You see you. You don't have that. Okay, so this is Lorraine signing off for now. I really do hope that you took something positive out from this kind of um, topic on what to do when you see your ex with their new partner. Okay, guys, this is Lorraine signing off for now. Take care. Hey, guys. Oh, my goodness. Um, First of all, I must apologize profusely to the really shit quality of the recording that I've done earlier. Oh my god. Um what it was is that when I was recording it I didn't have the you know, microphone adjusted properly. Um I was just spitting out the words and 
you know, I, I totally didn't even realize it until I played it back. And I don't really sort of like go by scripts. So very, very, very rarely would I have a script in front of me. And even if it's a script, it's just a, cu- a few little lines that I've written. And then I, I literally sort of like work my discussion around, you know, the few little sentences. So when I played it back, I just thought, oh, you know what? The message is there, but the quality of the audio is so rubbish. And I used to work, um, you know, a couple of years ago in an audio visual department in a college in London, sort of like central London area. And if my, you know, ex work colleagues could hear the, um, you know, this recording, I don't think they'd be impressed with me that much. So, you know, I should have known better. But, you know, when you're sort of speaking through the words and, you know, the emotions are there and everything's just coming out, I was like, you know what? Just don't worry about the recording, but just get it out and just hope that the listeners can understand that, you know, sometimes, you know, it's, it's not going to go that way. But as I said, um, you know, just jumping on to sort of like the outro of this, you know, recording what I was talking about. Um, yeah, um, it was sort of more aimed at women in the end, um, towards the end of the, um, the discussion. So guys, I do apologize, but hopefully we'll be able to pick something out from there. And you yourselves, you know, try your best not to worry about, you know, if you see your ex-girlfriend with her new beau or whatever, because you know something as well, what I mentioned with regards to the girls, the same could apply as well in, you know, in your instance as well. So just do not lose hope, guys, at all. We will get there in the end. Okay. Um, you know, but yeah, if it's something that, you know, obviously is still affecting you and, you know, you really are just totally down in the dumps, go and talk to somebody, go and talk to, even if it's somebody that you don't know, like, you know, one of those counselling services or like, a, you know, a close friend, somebody that you can trust, you know, because it's all about the trust thing as well when you sort of like disclose certain information, because what you're talking about is going to make you feel a bit vulnerable. And, you know, you don't want it to sort of like be something that you say something to somebody and then two twos now, it just gets flung back in your face, you know, because we don't need that shit in our lives right now. You know, it's all about just surviving, striving and surviving, you know, in this jungle of ours, this concrete jungle, this beautiful matrix of ours. And, you know, I mean that in a sarcastic way. I'm not trying to say that the matrix is beautiful at all because it ain't. Okay, guys, so thank you so much again for listening to this discussion. Again, apologies for the um, the poor quality of the recording. And um, as always, like I say, take care for now. Stay blessed. Stay golden. Never lay down and accept your fate. Always aim higher, guys. Always aim higher. All right, stay blessed. Peace. <laughs> Oh, 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 oh,